CC kernel is found under the color correction category. And this effect kind of breaks my brain. And I'll show you what I mean. If I drag it out onto this photo, the controls just don't make a lot of sense if you don't know what you're looking at. You've got line one, two, and three, and inside of each of these is just a bunch of numbers and letters. Some sliders with, for some reason, this value being one and everything else being zero. Divider, absolute values, and then finally, one thing I do understand that blend with original. So what is this effect? Well, I had to do a lot of research and I found the Psychor effects manual that I'll link to in the description of this video, where they explain that this effect is a way to make color calculations on pixels. And from some other research I've found, it's basically the foundation on how many effects in After Effects and Photoshop are created. You can blur an image, sharpen it up, add an emboss effect, find edges. There's lots of things that you can do with it, and the math used within this effect is what's going on behind those other effects, like find edges or any of the blurs. It's all just manipulation of the pixels that make up any given image. And if you weren't aware, if I zoom in nice and close, every single raster image is made up of blocks of colors, tiny squares called pixels. So this image is nothing more than squares of color that when you zoom out far enough, make up an image. So if you were to apply this effect and just start manipulating these values, you'd think that, well, I'm just making my image brighter or darker, and you're not really getting anywhere. This doesn't look all that different than the original other than it's just brighter and has a little bit more contrast. And in order to understand what exactly is happening when I adjust these values, it's important to understand what these values mean. This effect is actually laid out as a matrix, which is just a fancy way of saying a grid with rows and columns. And it's a little weird to look at in this format because this is just a single column of a bunch of effect properties. So what I've done is made up this little pixel matrix to kind of explain what exactly is going on here. This is a matrix of pixels. We have line one, line two, and line three. And that's what these values correspond to. We have L1 for line one, and then one, two, and three. And if I reset my CC kernel back to defaults, remember this value right here is set to one. This value, two L2, is line two's second value. And it's right in the center of the matrix. And this visual layout that I have here is how the effect is looking at the pixels in whatever you apply it to. That center value is what's called the processed pixel. So for any given pixel in this image, the effect is going to look at the surrounding pixels, which are all given these values of L12, L13, and so on, and then make a color calculation based on the relationship of those surrounding pixels to that center processed pixel. And believe me, I realize how complex this sounds. And the reality is we have all of these other effects that use this math in the background to create blurs and sharpens and find edges and things like that. So we generally don't have to think about it. But having access to this CC kernel allows you to dial in a very precise and specific look and even create your own custom blurs or sharpens using these values. Now I'm not going to pretend like I have an understanding of how to manipulate these values to get a specific look. But fortunately, the creators of this effect at Psychor Effects created an After Effects project that demonstrates all of these effects, and they've set up some keyframes to help you create a few different looks using CC Kernel. So I've copied and pasted those values into this composition. So I'm gonna turn off that pixel matrix and turn on these two layers. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of CC Kernel on the photo. Instead, I have it on an adjustment layer right here and I'll go to the beginning of my comp. If I press U, you can see that we're just going to cycle through some values here. The first one is going to give us a blur. Now, if I zoom in here, it's not all that noticeable, but if I turn the effect off and back on, sure enough, you can see that is producing some blur. If I play forward in time, then we switch to a find edges look. So I'll zoom in again, you can see that basically everything went black except for where there's a lot of contrast in the image and then it made those pixels mostly white. And this is all just by manipulating all of these values around that center processed pixel. I'll play forward again and we'll see the next look which is sharpen. And if I zoom in, that definitely looks sharper than with this effect off. And the last look is an emboss effect. Again, we're just manipulating these values. If I zoom in, we get that embossed look very similar to the emboss effect. Now, like I said, I'm not going to pretend like I understand how all of these values work together, but if I select all of these values and go into my graph editor, I'm looking at the value graph, we can kind of see how these pixels are changing. So let's go to this first set of keyframes that make up this blur effect. It's very subtle, but we might be able to make this a little bit more extreme. 
I'm going to select all the values besides this center pixel value. And I know it's that one because that's this label color right here. So select all of these keyframes and then enable my transform control box right here. Then I'm going to go to this transform box, hold down control or command on a Mac before clicking and dragging. And now I can expand these values out to be more dramatic. They're basically being proportionally spaced from where they already were. So if I make this much larger, then my image is actually getting a lot sharper. But if I go in the opposite direction, back to where we were and then making it even more extreme, basically inverting these values, that is getting much more blurry. It's not perfectly soft, it does have some texture to it still, but just clicking and dragging on these values as a group is a good way to kind of see how they're all affecting everything. I'm gonna undo back to where we were before and then just zoom out on my graph editor to show you what these changes in values look like as each effect is applied. All right, let me jump back out of that graph editor and we'll look at the other controls. We have this divider control, which acts as a way to scale all of the values that you're changing. So if I change this from one to two, then all of these values are going to be doubled in their scale. Or I could put that down to say 0.5 and it's gonna go in the opposite direction. Everything will be a little bit more sensitive. So in the find edges look, this is 0.5, this is one, and this is two. Next up, we have absolute values. If I check that on, then any pixels that go into a negative value, basically darker than black, are going to be interpreted as positive values. So on this find edges look, if I zoom in here to parts of the trees and I turn that on, you can see that these parts that went to absolute black get wrapped around and are now bright again. And then finally we have the blend with original, which is just an opacity slider for this particular effect. And I just wanna point out that Photoshop and even Premiere have these effects built in as well. If I go up to the filter menu in Photoshop, all the way down to other, and then to custom, this is a convolution filter effect, again with the matrix. And this is laid out in a much more visually understandable way. And instead of having a three by three matrix, we have a five by five matrix. So you have even more fine tuned control over the pixels inside of Photoshop still without any real understanding of what this effect is doing. But this custom filter dates way back to the earliest versions of Photoshop. It's a technique that's been used for a very long time with pixel-based images. But that's it for CC Kernel. I really wish I could give better guidance as to how to use this effect more effectively, but the calculations that are going on behind the scenes are just beyond me and I really can't make any sense of it. My best advice is to take a look at the sample project file that Psycore Effects have provided. Again, that'll be in the description of this video. And just go in here and play around with these values with the understanding now of what each value actually represents in this pixel grid. But that's everything that I can tell you about CC Kernel. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.